Yeah, I um, one of you know, it's a great win for us. I'm always thrilled when you win. It's hard to win. Um, our crowd was terrific from the beginning to the end. We needed them. Um, struggled a little bit offensively in the first half. Um, Second half, we got both things going for a while. I think we got a 14 or 15 or 16, something like that. And they started to make shots. We started making mistakes on defense. We, you know, we, we play a little bit younger uh, during that stretch. But uh, whenever they cut the two or whatever that timeout was, at 57, 52, we were terrific after that. We really guarded. They had a tough three in the corner, and they got the layup late. We were terrific defensively and offensively. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Uh, during that stretch, we did some things in the last three minutes I was really proud of. So, take away turnovers. I don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about it. I'm talking about it now. You got to get it corrected. But forget we shot 49%. So, if we can just cut that number down in half, it's really going to make things a lot easier for us. So, we'll keep working on it. And uh, we had to play without Eric tonight. He wasn't feeling well. Um, we weren't planning for that. And that was, that was a big, big thing to play that point guard uh, in a game. He's been terrific. And he tried to play through it. He wasn't himself. But he tried to play through it. And uh, so we just put him back in the training room uh, for the second half. Questions, please? John? Mark, can you talk about the, uh, the two plays that uh, Bruno made uh, right when the Duke? Still close. The, the yeah. one, the, the rebound and then pass to the Wiggins, yeah. and then just the left hand to come. Yeah, I, I thought the, um, well, we've worked really hard on what we do after an offensive rebound. And so it was great to see Aaron cutting. Bruno made the play, which was terrific. And to be quite honest with you, it was probably one of our best possessions of the game. We had a lot of them um, where we used the whole clock and ran a play for Bruno, and he shoots a little left hand hook with shot clock going off, put us up eight. And I think it was only like a minute 30 after that. So that was a terrific possession. Played with a lot of poise there and executed at a high level uh, there. And um, so I was happy. Um, you know, Bruno, first half, we were not in front of me. He was catching the ball too far off the block. Second half, we were able to establish him a little bit deeper. Um, you know, even the pass he made to Sorrell, where Sorrell got fouled, made three free throws. That was a, a terrific play for us. So. It's hard to win in February, guys, and um, you know, we, we did what we had to do, so I'm happy. Emily in the back. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Com. When you win a game like that, right, do you leave more, more concern that you let the lead shrink from 16 to 2, or are you reassured by the way they were able to play late? Well, I'm disappointed in the way that we played defensively during that stretch. We made a lot of mistakes, okay? Uh, weren't alert, soft foul for a three-point play, whatever it was. So um, that's disappointing. We can, but you'd much rather learn in a win. <laughs> Been learning a lot, so we can watch that with those guys that weren't playing as well in that stretch, um, and, and watch film, and hopefully be better because of it. Um, but it's always nice to know because you, when we don't play well at the end of the game, we get criticized till the next game. So to play well at the end of the game is is great for this young team. Thank you, Coach. The key to containing Caleb Weston, yeah, you guys helped him with three twelve shooting. So. Yeah, Bruno was terrific. Um, I just thought Bruno was terrific. When he went out, we tried to get Bruno out. And the first half, unfortunately, Sticks had the scores table for three minutes when Caleb was out. And I wanted Bruno sitting next to me because Bruno gets tired. Uh, but I thought his defense was terrific uh, on him. Our help side was good. Um, our ball pressure was good. But the other guys around him were playing so well, they didn't need him. Well, they were making some shots now. Um, and the guys stepped up. I told the guys before the game when CJ wasn't playing, Two of my worst losses in my career is when a point guard on the other team hasn't played because everybody relaxes. Oh, we're going to beat this team easily. Well, no, they got a lot of top 50 players in their locker room. 
okay, and another one stepped up today uh, in his in his uh, absence. So uh, and we had to play without our point guard in the end, and Sorrell stepped up for us, which was terrific. Patrick Thierry. Mark, along those lines, the, the work that Sorrell was able to do today, Chris Holden was just in here talking about how it felt like so many of your complimentary pieces know their roles, and it seems like Sorrell's been a guy that's been able to do it, but has also been able to rise to one of the events. What, what can you kind of make of what he's been able to do? Well, just, you know, you, you tell guys to be ready when their numbers call, and he exemplified that today. I say all the time to people, I just wish I could play Sorrell more. You know, Eric's been so good, Aaron Wiggins has been so good, Daryl's been good, Anthony's been good. And I say all the time, I wish I could play him more, I wish I could play him more. I wanted to play him more at Iowa, and I didn't get the opportunity to do that. He made a big three in that game. So, he's comfortable, he's a great kid. Uh, he really stepped up, you could see from the beginning he was going to play well. And then this, what was great, the second half he, he really guarded. First half he didn't guard as well, second half he really guarded, got his hands on some balls. Uh, and, and, and did some good things. So I'm really happy for him because he's one of the first guys in the gym every day and one of the last guys to leave. So for him to be rewarded on a big stage in a big game like that, that's nice true. Mark, you, yesterday you were talking about what happened two years ago. Did you feel like uh, there was an extra gear for Cowan uh, in particular and some of the other veterans? Yeah, I, I thought we, I thought, I thought we were fresher. Now, what I mean by that is this time of year, you can overthink it and overpractice, or you can trust your guys. And we took Wednesday off because we got home at 4 in the morning. And then Thursday, we just lifted and shot with our top six guys. And I thought we were fresher because of it. And you'd see it in Anthony, right? He, he looked really fresh. So I trust my guys. I really do. And we were able to do that. Um, and I think it's going to help us move forward. Um, but no, our guys were locked in. We just can't get out of our own way the first five minutes of a game. I mean, we had Daryl for a layup the first play, throwing six feet off the block. So once we figure that out and we figure out turnovers, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, now our guys are dialed in. They know. They know every game's hard in this league. There's nothing easy. And so they were dialed in to win. How much did CJ Jackson Jackson's uh, change the defensive game when Daryl was kind of used him as a you know, small ball four for five Well, what had happened is. Um, I can't see. Uh, Wood. Wood, right? 32? Is that it, guys? Woods. Woods. He was terrific. Holy, holy smokes. This guy's shooting like 22% from three in the league, and then here he is popping threes and posting them up. And we did a great job on him in the second half, but give him different minutes, but did CJ have given him that? You don't know. You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole thing. Um, but we had a game plan to guard CJ a certain way because he's a leading scorer at 12 and a half. Um, and it, it changes things a little bit, but you know, they got good players. And um, all those kids can really play, and, and guys stepped up in, 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 in minutes just like our guys did with, without, you know, Eric. Down to the back to the second straight game, you, you went to that uh, four guard. Yeah. Lineup at the end. Now I I don't know how much of it was planned or how much of it was the result of Jalen taking that three, but um, but when they when you go when you go to that lineup, does it does it give Bruno more more room to operate as well, and, and maybe helps you a little bit? It helps if Daryl goes to the right spot when we throw it to him. That that helps us. But that was a hundred percent defense. I mean we were having a hard time guarding him, and. Now, I'm not mentioning any names, we're late on three, we're late on another three. Uh, Daryl allows us to switch ball screens, uh, and so we were just more solid defensively. And you look when we went to that lineup, what their offense did after that. So I want to play Sticks, and I want to play Ricky. I think that's our best defensive team normally. Um, but they went small, and the one kid was making shots, and it made it really hard to guard. So uh, we had to do what we had to do. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, I got you.